from NPR. This is a story from NPR. NPR radio ratings collapse as pandemic ends listeners commute. And I love this. Just another like silver lining story about the coronaphobia crisis. Things that are being revealed, right? When people have this excuse to just there's so many things they can use Corona's excuse for, right? If you want to, you want to sit at home and collect welfare. You never really wanted to work. You were only kind of doing it out of social expectations. Then okay, fine. Uh, you're you're a politician, and and you just want to you know give more money to your corporate sponsors. The only reason you weren't doing it is because people were were holding you back and paying attention to things like that when they uh, weren't being distracted by the virus with a lower fatality rate than trying to spend a counterfeit $20 bill in Minneapolis. And in the case of commuters, it's being revealed to NPR, yeah, we were only listening to you because it was convenient and we weren't able to do other stuff and we were kind of forced by circumstances to sit in our cars. And there was, yeah, so we listened to NPR, but now that we stay at home more and we don't have to commute, yeah, you're not that important. Broadcast ratings for nearly all NPR radio shows took a steep dive in major markets this spring as the coronavirus pandemic kept many Americans from commuting to work and school. The network's shows lost roughly a quarter of their audience between the second quarter of 2019 and the same months in 2020. People who listen to NPR shows on the radio at home before the pandemic by and large still do, but many of those who listened on their commute have not rejoined from home. And that threatens to alter the terrain for NPR for years to come, said Lori Kaplan, the network's senior director of audience insights. And now when I hear something like this, this is threatening to alter the terrain for years to come. It's kind of like, well, you know, the invention of the automobile really threatened to alter the terrain for horse and buggy manufacturers for years to come. No, obviously, there's a there's a really fundamental adjustment that's going on here. That's a good thing. Uh, as, as Kaplan said, um, who is the network's senior director for Audience Insights, we anticipated these changes. This kind of change was going to take place over the next decade, but the pandemic has shown us what our future is now. Yeah, the future for pro-status bootlicking government-sponsored media propaganda is bleak, fortunately. Commercial radio is experiencing, if anything, worse declines, but audience research commissioned by Kaplan indicates that NPR's audience is disproportionately made up of professionals who are able to work from home and who are interested in doing so even after the panic subsides. As she says, we're experiencing a sea change. We're not going back to the same levels of listening that we've experienced the past on broadcast. So a couple of fun quotes here from the end from um, uh, another, an another person, uh, Lansing, who's with NPR. Um, after a long career as a television executive and a stint as the CEO of the federal government's international broadcasting agency. And, you know, whew. okay, so this is uh, because on Wednesday, this is media shakeups around the world and, and, you know, really positive accelerations of the shift to a, a new media landscape. And it's Wednesday, uh, the BBC said it would lay out this yesterday, 70 staffers on top of 450 earlier this year for a total cut of about 8%. The British newspaper, The Guardian, also disclosed it would lay off 180 staffers, including 70 journalists. So the CEO, John Lansing, right, and this is the guy who is the, you know, before worked for, okay, CEO of the federal government's international broadcasting agency. This is like radio free Europe type crap, like the propaganda, we're driving leaflets in, in places where we wanna confuse the local public into supporting the American empire. 
I mean, who is this guy? Like, I just want to hear all like the liberal listeners of NPR, you know, fancy themselves to be woke and even even especially informed, a little counterculture perhaps. And like I I actually like NPR. When I'm I've, I've had times when I was driving commuting, I'm like, all right, well, what's on the radio? If I and I, I feel silly that I didn't I didn't have the extra I didn't take the extra effort. To just be a little more conscientious of my media consumption, say I've got a smartphone. I can pull up anything I want right now. Why am I listening to the national propaganda rebroadcasting system, NPR, which now, I mean, headed by such bootlickers? But a couple quotes from Lansing, the CEO. It's important for us to reach our future audiences where they are. Whether or not it's in their car or on other digital platforms or social media platforms, not unlike World War II, you just don't come out the other end and everything's back to being 1939. Certain habits are going to be changed. And I I love the bottom of this thing. It says, disclosure. This article was written and reported by NPR media correspondent David Folkenflick and edited by NPR tech and media editor Emily Kopp and managing editor Terry Samuel. Under the network's protocol, protocols for covering itself, no corporate officials or news executives reviewed this story until it was published. Look at how honest we are as journalists and unbiased. Yeah, right. Well, as we see with the coronavirus, the coronaphobia crisis, people are being forced to be more conscientious of their media consumption and getting away from old media and propaganda at an accelerated pace. And that's another beautiful silver lining to celebrate. 